Related to the idea of our AC low lines, we have this concept of maximum symmetrical swing. And so what our maximum symmetrical swing is telling us is basically how much we can vary in our, our output collector current before we get into a nonlinear region. So as I have written here, we have for symmetrical input to produce a symmetrical output, the amplifier needs to be linear. And so what that means is we want to be in the forward active mode, so we don't want to be in saturation and we don't want to be in cutoff. And so our maximum symmetrical swing is sort of just a way to say how much can we vary that output before we reach that cutoff state. And so I want to talk about some notation in the textbook just because at times it can be a bit confusing, but in, as long as you sort of grasp the ideas behind it, I think you can, you can do well to sort of recognize what, what it's talking about. So here we have our ICQ in the middle, and we're saying that it's allowed to vary to some maximum value, for instance, before it goes into saturation, and some minimum value before going into cutoff, or for some other reason before our signal gets clipped. And so the notation that you'll see in the text is that they call sort of half of this variation, so between ICQ and IC min, or between ICQ and IC max, delta IC. So this would be delta IC. And so in other places, they also call this lowercase IC. And so that's where it can be a little bit confusing, but as long as you sort of follow this basic concept, uh, of the maximum symmetrical swing being this whole change between our max and min, uh, you should be able to recognize what the notation is referring to. So our maximum symmetrical swing, which I'll just abbreviate as MSS here, is going to be equal to two times that delta IC. So again, it's that whole range between our maximum and minimum. So as an example, if we have, for instance, our ICQ is maybe equal to 0.894 uh, milliamps, then if we had some IC min, so maybe we only have information about our IC min, and we know that our IC max is not going to drive the device into saturation. So for instance, if IC min is zero, then we could say max change in IC, so max change in IC, is just going to be delta IC equals to IC equals 0.894. And so that 0.894 milliamps is the change from ICQ to IC min. So basically we're looking at the change here, but if we want to talk about maximum symmetrical swing, we have to add sort of the other half as we're going from ICQ to IC max. So we would say that this corresponds to a maximum symmetrical swing of two times that 0.894 or 1.79 milliamps. And again, in this case, we're assuming that this 1.79 is not, not driving the device into saturation. So oftentimes that's going to be the case in terms of you'll have one of these two values sort of being the limiting factor and it's not necessarily both limiting it at the same time. So in this sort of quick rough example, we've said our IC min is the point that we need to stay above and we're assuming that the IC max is not an issue. So sort of the benefit of that is then knowing the change in our AC collector current. So knowing our change in the AC collector current, because again, remember we're talking about uh, if we're talking about deviations from ICQ, at the moment we're neglecting any, any changes from uh, you know, beta variations or things like that, temperature changes. We're saying this is purely due to some input signal, some sinusoidal input that's sort of superimposed on top of that DC signal. So if we know the change in that AC collector current, then we want to use the AC load line to figure out our change in the AC collector emitter voltage. So knowing change in AC collector current, we can use AC load line to get the corresponding change in our AC CE voltage. And so this is a topic we're not going to go into in a whole lot more depth. Um, but I believe there's a problem on the homework. So as you're working through that homework problem, or if you're just curious about this, 
You can look a little closer at pages 416 to 417 in the textbook. And so what that has is a couple things. It has a problem solving technique block, which just goes through some steps of how you would approach this problem, how you sort of optimally design a circuit to get that maximum symmetrical swing, as well as an example, uh, example 6.11, on page 417, which sort of goes through that process. So again, as you're working through the homework, or if you're just interested in knowing some more about this, definitely take a look at those pages in the textbook.